starting out life in the arcades way back in 1986, OutRun has become synonymous with the term arcade racer and has managed to influence nearly every racing game in some way since. OutRun 2006 Coast to Coast is essentially a reimagining of the first title in the series and brings with it many changes, the first obviously being the visuals that to this day still impress. It truly is comparable to the home console release, with the power of the PSP really coming into its own to produce impressive environments as well as the several vehicles that make the cut. Now the entire experience is sectioned into different modes, including a pretty robust campaign that will see you racing rivals and trying to thrill your passenger as much as possible with your skills. At the beginning not that much is available to the player but basic cars and challenges in which to take on, but through the use of something known as outrun miles, which can be earned by participating in the several modes on offer, it's possible to unlock more cars, challenges, tracks and even background music which help pad out the experience and make it all the more enjoyable to play on the go. If you're a fan of arcade races, OutRun 2006 Coast to Coast is bound to put a smile on your face. It well and truly deserves a spot in your collection as well. The first thing to know going into Grip Shift is that it's not a simple racer. It brings together aspects from both platforming and puzzle games as well to create something entirely unique that it can call its own. The game is broken up into a set of challenges, races and minigames, with the challenges providing the bulk of the gameplay. Each one usually consists of around three objectives in which to complete, such as beating a set time, collecting stars or finding hidden items. As you progress each track gets increasingly more difficult in which to navigate. Once you're done with the main modes there are a ton of minigames games you can get stuck into, which soon become one of the finest aspects of the experience. But the real star of the show has to be the intricate and well thought out track editor that essentially gives you a never ending amount of content to consume. All in all Grip Shift is one hell of a game that should be part of any PSP owner's collection. Sega Rally Revo is a port of the PlayStation 3 and 360 versions of the same name. It manages to retain most aspects of the home console versions and presents a rally experience with a distinct arcade flavour. Because of this there is not much of an emphasis upon realism and this shows when making your way around the track. Each car does manage to feel unique but only in raw speed. The handling of every machine tends to steer towards a more accessible and satisfying nature that will see you throwing them sideways into corners without much regard. Now there are several modes available, from time trial to quick race, but championship has to be the main attraction and serves as the way in which to unlock more cars and tracks and provides a compelling and rewarding aspect to the otherwise simple arcade makeup. Adding to this is the generous multiplayer mode that only requires one copy of the game and what you have is one of the most enjoyable races on the system. It's just a shame that not many got around to playing it. Gran Turismo on the PSP is a bit of a mixed bag. At first glance it seems to be the driving simulator that we've all come to know and love, but upon further examination there are some glaring flaws. They don't at all completely break the deal, but if you're looking for a similar experience to the full blown console versions, you might walk away disappointed. Let's get the good out of the way first, the visuals are top notch and really showcase what the PSP is capable of, and just like the other entries in the series, the gameplay is tight and responsive as you would expect. But what lets it down is the sheer lack of content there is no extensive career mode, but instead a series of challenges that make up the bulk of the single player options. This alone is bound to turn some people away as the main draw of the series, especially for me, has always been the well thought out and implemented career mode, which is just completely absent. If you can look past this fact though, Gran Turismo is still a great racer on the PSP, and although it won't be winning any awards, it's still one that deserves a go. Just like its console counterpart, Midnight Club 3 packs a serious punch on the PSP, but it doesn't come without any disadvantages. Let's get the bad out of the way and talk about the unforgivable long load times. If you're the type of player that can look past it, then you are in for one of the finest racing experiences on the handheld. But if you're rather impatient, waiting for the game to load up can be an absolute chore. But once you're in, the first thing that will strike you are the incredible visuals. An extreme amount of work has been put into this aspect of the game, that it really does look like a PS2 game in the past of your hands. As with each game in the series, a generous amount of customization is afforded to the player, allowing them to create and tailor their vehicle to their specific style. Each change offers a real noticeable difference once out on the road, which makes experimenting with all the options available all the more rewarding. As I mentioned earlier, if you can look past some of the game's shortcomings, there is no doubt that this is one of the finest races available on the handheld. 
Split Second is a rather unique driving game that sees players taking part in a fictional reality TV show with each fighting for money and victory. What makes it stand out when compared to other races is the way in which you can alter the track you are racing on through the use of a special meter known as the Power Play. By performing well on the track such as drafting opponents and driving or performing stunts, the meter slowly builds and once activated several obstacles are created on the track. From falling debris to new shortcuts for you to take, it manages to add something fresh to the usual gameplay found within the genre and lend Split Second an identity it can confidently call its own. Now there are many subtle differences with the PSP version. Aside from the downgraded visuals, there are several positive additions such as more tracks and gameplay modes that make it the best version in my opinion. So if you're looking for some fast paced racing on the system and have exhausted the other options, Split Second is well worth a purchase. Starting out life on the PS1, the Wipeout series went on to become one of Sony's flagship titles, which meant a handheld version was inevitable for the PSP. It takes everything from the series which had been learned up until that point, and presents a futuristic take on the racing genre, with a huge emphasis upon speed and the use of weapons. Like previous entries, you can expect to find a well thought out and robust campaign mode that slowly deals out extra cars and circuits for you to use throughout the game. Once on the track, Wipeout Pulse truly comes into its own, and excels during its second to second gameplay. Littered around each track are boost zones and items that can help turn the outcome of even the most challenging race. But your opponents naturally have access to these abilities as well, which manages to lend a layer of strategy to each race. From missiles to deflection shields and lasers, there are many options when it comes to either going on the offensive or playing it safe and holding your position when in front. If you've ever been fond of the series and were hoping to play it on the go, Wipeout Pure is a great way to do exactly that. As many will know, I'm a huge fan of the Ridge Racer franchise. It was the first game I played upon receiving a PS1, and I instantly fell in love with its accessible and enjoyable gameplay. The PSP version literally feels like the culmination of the entire series. Every track, song, and nearly every car that has ever appeared throughout the franchise can be earned and unlocked throughout the extensive and rewarding World Tour mode, which is the real highlight of the overall experience. Several other modes are included as well, such as a standard time attack option and a multiplayer mode for up to 8 players where a lot of the replay value lies. Although not the most realistic racer on the handheld by any means, Ridge Racer 2 is perfect for those quick pick up and play moments due to the arcade nature of its gameplay, and once you've mastered it, it is simply sublime. If you're a fan of the genre and are looking for something to easily pass the time with, Ridge Racer 2 would be a perfect addition to your library. Motorstorm Arctic Edge was the first time the series ventured onto a handheld, and just like its console counterparts, it is an extremely addictive and well-executed racer that any fan of the genre will instantly enjoy. It shares much in common with the likes of Burnout, but takes each race off-road through a variety of courses, from dusty mountains to snow-filled peaks, and centers around the use of a boost mechanic which can be earned by driving fearlessly. Now the game is split up into a range of modes, with the festival or career being at the core of the experience. Each race you take part in Towards the player points, which can be used to unlock more tracks, customization options, and new vehicles. There are eight types of machines to get used to, such as motorcycles, trucks, and tractors, that all manage to feel unique and offer their own advantages depending on the course you find yourself on. Overall, Motorstorm Arctic Edge brings with it impressive graphics, a great soundtrack, compelling gameplay, and lots of options, making it an essential purchase on the PSP for anyone who is fond of the genre. The Burnout franchise is one that has consistently grabbed my attention, mainly due to its entirely unique take on the racing genre as a whole. It's not just simply about racing, although it obviously does play a huge part of the overall game, it is much more focused upon driving recklessly and destruction. Burnout Legends on the PSP is no different, that same emphasis upon action resonates throughout the entire game. Now as you would expect there are several modes to take part in, such as tournaments and something called pursuit races, with the latter providing some of the more memorable moments from the experience. It sees you taking control of a cop car and taking out street racers by slamming them off the roads in what is known as a takedown. These takedowns soon become an integral mechanic to each and every type of race you'll find yourself competing in, and by taking out enemies and performing risky maneuvers such as heading into oncoming traffic or near misses, you will slowly build a meter that eventually grants you a boost. Obtaining the highest speed possible is the name of the game, and in turn grants you more points whilst performing these actions whilst boosting. There is truly nothing like burnout, and 
the PSP version offers one of the best ways to experience it, mainly for those looking for something addictive and fun to play on the go. That does it for today's video, don't forget to hit subscribe and hit that notification bell. As always, thanks for watching and I will see you next time.